Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to our kindergarten and first grade hour here at home with APS. I'm Ms. Jacobson, and it's great to see you again. Our shows have started to air, and so I know that you're getting to know us, and we're getting all kinds of wonderful feedback from parents and students and teachers from all over the state of New Mexico, even some in other states like Colorado and in Arizona. So we want to give a shout out to all the kids around and outside of New Mexico who are watching. We want to say welcome and hope you have a wonderful day. First of all, one of the things that parents have said that they need is an idea of what supplies to have ready when you are doing your um, lessons in the mornings. And so you might want to put together a little supply box. If you have pencils, paper, maybe a ruler, some glue or a glue stick, some scissors and crayons, those things we're going to use a lot. If you have them, great. If you don't, maybe you only have paper and pencil at home, that's okay, because everything that we can do, we can do with paper pencil too. So those are the basic supplies that we'll use. Sometimes we'll use other things like colored paper and wrapping paper or fabric, and we'll let you know about those. We're getting ready to put those on the APS resources page for parents that we've been talking about every day, and that way you can see the episode ahead of time, what kinds of supplies you will need. And again, remember that these shows are going to be on YouTube as well. So if you miss a show, you can get on YouTube. The APS Expect Great Things YouTube site is where they are housed. And they are by grade level, so you can watch any one of them that you want to. They get posted the day that they air. So you can't watch them ahead, but you can watch them if you missed them. We have a very special guest here with us today. This is Dr. Antonio Gonzalez who is the Associate Superintendent for Learning Zone 2. So tell us a little bit about Learning Zone 2. Well, Ms. Jacobson, thank you so much for doing this and um, facilitating this wonderful learning experience for our students, not only in APS, but as you mentioned, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a great service, and I hope that our students and our parents are benefiting greatly. I know they are. I have a feeling because I speak to a few of them every day. Yes. Um, but they're really enjoying it, and I, I can't thank you enough for the work that you've done, and the team well, you're, as well. You're very welcome. And you've got a couple of, of watchers at home who are, gonna be, who are going to be doing the lessons with us. And I do, yeah. So they'll be excited to hear the book that you're going to read. We've been asking principals from all over the district to send us pictures of them reading. And I have a picture today um, boys and girls, this is Miss Leslie Cummings. She is the principal at Cochiti Elementary School here in Albuquerque. Now it's a Zone Three school, not a Zone Two school, if I if I'm correct. But this, she is reading. I can't tell what book she's reading, but she's got two pugs, a guinea pig, and a rabbit on her lap. And she said this was very challenging to do, but they are reading every single day. And I imagine that your family is reading every day too. What kinds of things do your kids like to read? Well, they really um, enjoy um, learning about history. I've gotten them hooked into history because I was a former history teacher, so ah. I have a lot of books mm -hmm. um, that they're able to read. But I really want to also take an opportunity and just give a word of um, encouragement and thanks to yes. the schools in Zone 2, mm -hmm. um, which really encompass Albuquerque, Southwest Mesa, mm -hmm. and South Valley. Mm -hmm. um, so many dynamic, innovative, and outside the box thinking mm -hmm. um, during these challenging times by our principals, our teachers, our educational yeah. assistants. Um, every role group that really makes the district tick tock, if you will, yeah. um, has really stepped up to the plate. And I could not be more proud to be a part of the, um, the profession um, mm -hmm. of educators that make up um, Albuquerque Public Schools. That's true. So my, my hat is tipped yeah. to all of our um, educators throughout the district, yeah. but specifically this morning, um, I want to pay tribute to, to those principals, teachers, and educators that make up the learning community that we know is Zone 2. Absolutely. Now, how many students do you have in Zone 2, do you think? We're about 23,000 students wow. um, in Zone 2, um, which um, is made up of the Rio Grande, Atrisco Heritage, and West Mesa feeder schools. Mm -hmm. So all of the elementaries, middle schools, and, and the high schools make up that number. That's great. And um, it's a really an exciting place to really celebrate um, the diversity of language and dual language programs are strong in zone two. 
really a college going culture in that in August, every one of the schools will be um, part of the AVID program, which really looks at college and career readiness mm -hmm. from pre-K yeah. all the way through 12th grade and beyond. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of exciting things happening. That's great. And AVID also, if I'm not mistaken, does a lot of work with science, technology, engineering, and math uh, concepts. And so kids are going to probably be getting a lot of that kind of instruction as part of that AVID program too. That would be That's fun. absolutely right. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a lot of strategies mm -hmm. are used really to um, tease out the curriculum and really um, have it manifest itself in a really strong and dynamic way yeah. um, along the, the STEM um, trajectory. Now you've been really active in getting technology to the students in your zone. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening there where computers and laptops and Chromebooks and things are concerned? Well, as we speak um, at our high schools in about less than 24 hours from now, we will have distribution centers for all of our um, high school students. Now, the intent is to really get a computer in the hands of every family Wow! so that um, we can have um, them take advantage of learning opportunities such as this one mm -hmm. and other um, curriculum that's going to be deployed by their teachers. Mm -hmm. And we're starting with the high school tomorrow. Right. And then um, next week, we'll be moving down toward phase two, which is our middle schools, and phase three, which is our elementaries. However, it is our hope that we will begin to touch the lives of middle and elementary school students even this week because we know that they have older siblings that mm -hmm. are in the high school. Right. Therefore, um, they can um, begin mm -hmm. to take advantage of um, Google Classroom meetings with their right. teachers that I know are getting off the ground, mm -hmm. um, different learning platforms, um, supplemental activities, take advantage of the um, morning show that we have here right. every single morning. Right. So um, a lot of really um, intentional and um, innovative work has happened. That's great. And that will really help our high school seniors and juniors who are so eager to finish their high school, on a, their high school experience on a positive note and be able to achieve graduation and all of those things. That's a wonderful project. That's exciting. Now, boys and girls, remember, we filmed two weeks ahead. So by the time they see this, this show, those students will have those devices in their hands, and that is really, really exciting. So you've got a book that you're going to read to us. I want to I let you have your time with the kids because I know they would love to hear this book. Tell us about the book and why you chose it. Well, in thinking about the book that I was going to read, um, I thought about the difficult times that we're going through right now, mm -hmm. but I also thought about the potential. Yeah. And this book, Oh, the Places You'll Go, was actually a gift from some mentors mm -hmm. when I graduated my undergraduate degree and became a teacher. Oh, wonderful. And um, I've held these mentors near and dear to my heart throughout these years. Mm -hmm. And I've recognized that um, the book talks about some maybe difficult times, but it also talks about the potential of the great times. Right. So I really want to emphasize that, oh my goodness, the places where our young people can go, mm -hmm the potential and the light that's at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. um, beyond this um, pandemic that we're um, living through right now right. Um, is really something that I really want to just bring a little light into their day. You bet. And um, support them um, today with the reading of this book. Oh, the places you'll go, and I know there'll be many, many, many places that's for each right. and every one of our students. And, and we will get there in person some at some point down the road, but we can also go there in our imaginations too. Well, I'm gonna let you read the book. Thank you for being with us today. It's great to talk to you. Thank you for doing all of this, Jane. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our read aloud. So the book we're gonna read this morning, uh, boys and girls, is a book um, entitled, Oh, the Places You'll Go. And it's written by Dr. Seuss. It is illustrated by Random House in New York and published by Random House as well. So let's get started. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You'll have brains in your head 
You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know, and you are the guy or gal who will decide where you go. You'll look up and down streets, look him over with care. About some will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers and soar to high, high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true that bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a pickly perch and your gang will fly on. You'll be left in a lurch. You'll come down from the lurch which, with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in it for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. So we'll come to a place where the stress streets are not marked some windows are lighted, but mostly they're darked. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right and three quarters, or maybe not quite? Or go around back and sneak in front from behind? Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find, for a mind maker-upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start in to race. Down long wiggled roads at the breaknecking pace. And grind on for miles across weirdish wild space, headed, I fear, toward the most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or a no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting, waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for the wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for Friday night, or waiting perhaps for their Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, 
or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all the waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip flapping, once more you'll ride high, ready for anything under the sky. Ready because you're that kind of guy or gal. Oh, the places you'll go, there is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame. You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm, afri I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win, because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something you'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance you'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between Hitcher and Jan that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you will go through the weather be foul. On you will go though your enemies prowl. On you will go through the hacken cracks powl. Onward up many a frightening creek through your arms may get sore and your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike and I know you'll hike far and face up to your problems whatever they are. You'll get mixed up of course as you already know You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact, and remember that life's a great balancing act. You'll never forget to be dexterous and deft, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will. Indeed, 98 and three-fourths percent guaranteed. But I think for you all, it's 100%. Kid, yes, you kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name, Baxam or Bigsby or Bray, or Mordecai Ali Van Al Allen O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting. So go, get on your way. This book talks about um, difficult times, but it also talks about great potential. And it talks about the ability for every young person, be it through your imagination or be it in reality, to be able to think of and make goals for yourselves. During these times of working at home and building plans for yourself and keeping up with your studies, I encourage you to get out a piece of paper, get out a pencil, and write a list, one, two, three, maybe 10 goals that you have for yourselves. And you can build those goals by the years, maybe goals for first grade, goals for third grade, goals for eighth grade, goals for 12th grade. And every year, check off those goals because, oh my goodness, the places you can go. You are the keeper of your destiny. And don't let the difficult times bring you down, but let them soar up, just like the phoenix, story of the phoenix. And know that you are indeed destined to go to amazing places. Take care, everybody. 
Hi, I'm Mrs. B, and today we're going to talk about the number of the day. Our number of the day is the number seven. Say it with me. Seven. Let's count up to seven. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's count backwards. Ready? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let me write number seven on the board. Draw a line in the sky, then a slant makes a seven every time. So let's count seven and draw them using tally marks. Remember with tally marks, we have four straight lines and then a slash mark for every fifth line or to make a group of five. But before I go on, let me give you some time to get some things we need today. So today we're going to do some writing and we're going to play a game with small things or toys that you can put in your hands. So let me give you a minute to go and get something to write with and to write on, and to go get a collection of small things. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to count up to a minute by five. So I'm going to count up to 60 by fives. So ready, go get your stuff. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Okay, hopefully you were able to find some things to play with Miss Kathy next, a really fun math game. Okay, let's go back to our tally marks. Ready? We're going to go up to the number seven. One, two, three, four, diagonal for five, five, six, seven. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Can you spell seven? Let's spell it together. S. E, V, E, N, seven. Let's see if seven is an odd number or an even number. So this time, I was able to find a resource online for a 10 frame. But I also want to encourage you to make your own. Remember, I made this from an envelope draw 10 boxes, and then fill it with whatever you'd like. I used stickers. So if we want to find out if number seven is odd or even, we need to make sure that our stickers or our dots all have a partner. So let's count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's kind of hard to see if they all have a partner, so I'm going to switch it out from this 10 frame to the one I made. So there's partners here, pairs here, pairs here, not a pair here, not a partner here. This sticker is all by itself. So that means that seven is odd. So the number seven is an odd number. If we have seven things and we want to pair them all up, one of our things will not have a pair or a partner, so it's an odd number. And let's see what comes before and what comes after seven. So count with me up to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six comes before seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. Let's write a list on the board. So six is the number before seven, and eight is the number after seven. 
Now, let's work on our math facts. Our whole, if we had seven of something, right, would be all of our seven things. The two numbers I'm going to pick for our parts today are the numbers three and four. And let's review our math symbols. Remember, this is our minus sign for subtraction, take away, our addition symbol for plus or and, and our equal sign, and we could also say is. So, my parts for my whole, if I have three of something and, or I add on plus four, how many will I have? Let me get my 10 frame. So, three plus four. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three plus four, oops, put my parts up here, equals seven. What if I change that to four plus three? Well, we know what we're going to get, but let's, let's double check. Let's verify. Ready? One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Four plus three equals seven. Now with subtraction, we want to start with our whole. And our number of the day is seven. So we start with seven of something. And we're going to take away or subtract three. So I'm going to cover up three of these. How many do I have left? One, two, three, four. Seven minus three equals four. This time, I'm going to start with seven, and I want to take away or subtract four. So I'm going to start with seven, and this time, I'm going to cover up Four. See how many I have left over. One, two, three. So these family fun facts, right, math facts, are great for us to learn to read math, just like we read words. And you can use different parts. We could have used a six and a one, five, two, and we can come up with all of our family uh, math facts for the number seven with different parts. So before we go today, let's count one more time. And this time, let's count in Spanish. Let me get all of my numbers organized here. Make sure I have them. Okay, ready? Here we go. En español. Uno. Dos. Tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete. Let's count in reverse in Spanish. Vamos a contar en reversa en español. Siete, seis, cinco, cuatro. Tres, dos, uno. Great. So all of the different ways to show our number seven, what comes before, what comes after, some math facts to help us remember all the parts that go with the whole number seven. Up next is Miss Kathy with a fun math game. I'm so glad you joined me today. Have a great day. Hi, mathematicians, and welcome to Math Games with Ms. Kathy. I'm so happy to see you here today. I'm so happy to be your teacher. Today, we're going to be learning how to play a new math game, and we're also going to be counting a collection of items. But first, I want us to estimate what the collection might be. So I have here for you a collection in this glass bowl of toy cars. 
And all of these toy cars are pretty special to me because they belonged to my husband when he was a kid. And so we're gonna count them today. They're all really cool looking. So what I'd like for you to do is to make a guess. How many do you think are inside of this bowl? I'm gonna set that down for a moment. I talked to Mrs. B and Mrs. Q before, um, before we started today, and I asked them to make a guess. How many items do you think are in here? I'm gonna make a little chart to show our guesses. So first I asked Mrs. B, and Mrs. B told me she thinks that there are 12 items. So I'm gonna write down on my chart, Mrs. B said she thinks 12. But Mrs. Q disagreed. Mrs. Q thought there were way more items in there. Mrs. Q said, I think there's 21. That is a much higher number. And then there's me. And I am Miss Kathy. And so I'm going to add myself to my chart. And I'm going to guess, mm, I'm going to guess 30. I think there's a lot in there that you just can't see. So what I'd like for you to do is you can make your own chart or you can just write down on a piece of paper and cover it up your guess. And anybody else in the room can go ahead and write down, any grown-ups or siblings, how many items do you think are inside of this glass bowl? All right, do you have your guesses? Great. We're gonna find out. And to find out, we are going to count them by twos. Oh, I wonder if that'll stay up. I think I can invent a solution here so that you can see. Maybe. Boom. Okay, so I'm going to pull out these items, and we're going to count them by twos to see how many they really are total. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, 15, one left over. We cannot count that one by twos. So there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and one more is 15. There are 15 cars up here. So I want you to look at our guesses. Who was the closest? Who was the farthest away? You're right, Mrs. B was the closest. She had the closest guess. She guessed 12, and she was only three off. 12, 13, 14, 15. She was pretty close. Mrs. Q's number was closer, but still way too high. And mine was twice as high. I thought there were double the number of cars in there. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm gonna need a much bigger bowl to have that many items in here. So for our collection of items today, we had 15 total, and we can count 15 by twos and adding one more, or we could count by fives. I'm gonna push them all together again. Let's count these cars by fives. So I'm going to grab a collection of five, put them together. There's five, 10, 15. I have 15 cars all together. Five, 10, 15. All right, friends. I chose cars as our collection item of the day because they're pretty special for telling stories. And you can play with cars all the time, and you probably have, like, if you were to play with cars in your own home, little toy cars, you could come up with some really cool stories and ways that they interact with each other. Um, and when you do that, you can actually do math, which I'm gonna show you how to do. So to move into the math game, you're going to need your piece of paper that Mrs. B was talking about earlier. You will need a pair of scissors and something to write with, either a marker or a pencil. So go ahead and make sure those items are ready to go for you. And while you do that, I'm going to organize my cars. Okay, so my friends who are in kindergarten and first grade, in math, you're learning this year how to count and like add and subtract within a certain number. For kindergartners, this number is up to 10. Kindergartners need to know how to add and subtract fluently, so doing it pretty well and fast, within 10. My friends in first grade need to be able to do it all the way up to 20. So if you are in kindergarten, I'm going to ask you in a moment to write down some numbers that go up to 10. 
And if you're in first grade, I'm going to ask you to go all the way up to 20. Okay. So on your piece of paper, you're going to need to write with your writing utensil the numbers that I just told you. So for kindergartners, we're going to write all the way up to 10. That's right. And I'm going to show you what that looks like before you begin so you can see how much room to leave. Okay, so my kindergarten friends, I want you to have nice big numbers and I want you to leave spaces between them, but also beneath them, because we're going to be cutting these numbers out. So go ahead and do that, my kindergarten friends. And my first grade friends, I want you to get started, but I want you to keep going. Don't stop at 10. I want you to go all the way up to 20. So I'm going to do that for you right now. So everyone's working right now on their numbers. And you'll notice that I wrote numerals. I wrote the num numeral representation. You could also write the number name if you wanted a challenge. That would be spelling it out. Almost done. And I used my best handwriting. I want you to do the same. So my kindergarten friends are going to go up to 10. And my first grade friends, you went all the way up to 20. And now what I'd like for you to do is to cut them all out because we're going to need these numbers. And so I just went down one, and then I'm going to put them in this glass bowl. You can use any kind of bowl, or even your hands, or just have them in a pile on the floor. That's OK. But what we want is all of these numbers, 1 through 10, 1 through 20, available so we can pick one in a little bit. All right, friends, I'm almost done. And remember, anytime you're using scissors at home, friends, that I want you to be really safe. So make sure you ask for help or permission from an adult, a grown-up in your home. We want to be safe, friends. Okay, so I have all of my numbers. I put all the way up to 20 in here because I'm ready for a challenge. And I want you to mix them up. And it's okay if you can see them. Mine's a glass bowl, so it would be really easy to see. Something you could do is fold them in half if you really wanted it to be secret. But mix them, mix them, mix them. Because in a moment, I'm going to have you pull one out. And when you pull that one out, it's going to be the basis for our game. I'm going to show you how to play this. So I have my numbers. And I can play this either by myself or, you know, be really fantastic as if I could play it with a friend or somebody at home, like my sister, or you could play with another grown-up. So I'm going to... Pull a number out of here. And the number I got is 8. But when you're playing this at home, I want you to keep it a secret, like put it face down. And so I have my collection of items that I'm going to use for this game. I have cars available for me today, but you could use Legos or seashells or buttons or even rocks. You can find some rocks outside to play with. OK, so my number is 8. And I'm going to make a story that adds up to the number eight. So let's see if you guys can follow along my story. There were four cars parked at the grocery store. But then four more cars came and parked at the grocery store too. How many cars are at the grocery store right now? Hmm. Well, you guys already know my number. It's eight. So in my story, I had four cars and four more came, which meant that I had four plus four more, and it equaled eight. So I said a number sentence, an equation, to go along with my story. So if I were playing with a friend, I would ask them, I would tell them my story, four cars were at the grocery store, and four more came. How many are there now? And my friend would have to think, and they could try to count them, or if they know that math fact, they could tell me right away. Four plus four equals eight. So there's two choices there. Let's play that again. I'm going to reset. I'm going to put all of them back. And I'm going to grab a new number. So I'm going to leave eight out to the side. And this time, I'm not going to show you my number. It's going to be a little tricky. OK. All right, friends. So. There were three cars 
driving and they stopped at a red light. And this was a long red light, so three more cars came and they were also parked at that same red light. And then three more came. How many cars were parked at that red light? Go ahead and take a moment. Can you figure it out? I'll say it one more time. Three cars came and they were stopped at a red light. Then three more came and they stopped and they were waiting too at that red light. And then three more came. How many cars are stopped at that red light now? Hmm. So you could come up with a number sentence, an equation to go with my story I just told you. You could count them, count the cars to figure out how many there are. You could write down your answer, or you could hold it in your brain and remember. Go ahead and tell me, what did you get? One way you could say this is three plus three plus three equals nine. That was my number that I picked up. Another way you could tell me is the total, Miss Kathy, is nine. That would be two really great ways to do that. Let's play again. I'm going to reset. And I'm going to pick a new number. I hope it's a high one this time. I want a number that's in the teens. But we don't know what we'll get. OK. Ooh, that is a good one. OK. So I have my number. And this time with my cars, I'm going to say they're driving on the freeway. Everybody's headed. This is after everyone's allowed to leave their homes. But everyone's driving on the freeway. And they're all headed to vacation. They're all so happy because they can leave their homes now. And right now on the freeway, there are 10 cars. There are 10 cars all driving on the freeway safely, of course. All of them are going the speed limit. And then five more cars join them. Let's see if I have room. I bet you'd have lots of room to play this game at home. OK. And right there. So I had 10 cars on the freeway, and five more joined. They're all headed to a fabulous vacation, because this is all over. How many are there all together? So remember, you can say a number sentence, or you can say an equation. How many cars are there? So go ahead and tell me what you came up with. You might say 10 plus 5 more equals 15, which was our number that we drew. Or you might say, Miss Kathy, the total number of cars is 15. And remember, you could count them, you could try to hold that number in your brain, or you could write it down. So this is the game that I came up with using only cars. But you could play this game with whatever toys or small items you'd like to play with at home. I would even play this outside with rocks and pretend that they're anything you'd like. Um, you can get really creative with your stories. You could tell a whole big story about where the cars are going and why they're going there. Or if you're playing with another item, um, like Legos, you could say that people are building something. And it could be a lot of fun. I would love to play this game in my classroom. Um, so you could play this game definitely at home. And make it more challenging, you could go up higher than 20. But I remember I want my kindergartners to definitely try up to 10, and my first graders all the way up to 20. And if you're ready for a challenge, you could do number names on your little cards instead of numerals. Or you could go all the way up to 100, which would be a lot of fun. So my friends, today we learned how to play our story problems math game, which is really fantastic because you're going to hear a story next with Mrs. Q that has math all throughout the story. Have a fantastic day, friends. Bye, mathematicians. Good morning, and welcome back to our kindergarten and first grade math read aloud. Today, I'm going to read 12 Ways to Get to 11. That's an interesting title, and it makes me think that could be backwards, but we'll find out. It's written by Eve Merriman and illustrated by Bernie Carlin.
12 ways to get to 11. Here's all the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12? Huh. Here he is. He's down here. Number 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Where's 11? Did you recognize that we missed number 11 also? Pick up nine pine cones from the forest floor and two acorns. Those are different. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is what it would look like if I wrote it as a number sentence. Nine plus two equals, what was that answer again? Eleven. At the circus, six peanut shells and five pieces of popcorn. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I wrote it again as a number sentence for you. Six plus five equals Eleven. This one used the word and to let me know that I was adding them together. Out of the magic, out of the magician's hat, four banners, five rabbits, a pitcher of water, and a bouquet of flowers. This one's getting much harder to add, but let's give it a try. Four banners, one, two, three, four, five rabbits, let's keep adding, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one pitcher, ten, and a bouquet of flowers, eleven. How many all together? It was eleven. Here's my number sentence, four, plus five, plus one, plus one. What was that answer again? It was 11, again. This one got a lot trickier and it didn't even tell us add or and, but we knew that we were adding them together. Go past four corners and two traffic lights, then past the house with no chimney, with two chimneys, and the garage with two cars and a bicycle. Now look, you're at 11th Street. This one might be really tricky to count up. Let's see, four corners, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Adding on that bike. This one got very tricky, adding in a lot of different objects. Still got to number eleven. Here's my number sentence. Four corners plus two traffic lights, plus two chimneys, plus two cars, plus one bike. What was that answer? It was 11. I wonder if they're going to get harder as we keep going. Six bites from an apple, a core, a stem, 
and three apple seeds. How many is that all together? Let's count and see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I really like this example. It's all part of the same apple, even though they also took each part separate. Here's the number sentence that I wrote. Six plus one plus one plus three. Did you get the answer, 11? I hope so. On the boat are two masts. The mast could also be this part that goes up. A big and a little sail. This is the sail, a big one and a little one. Four little life preservers, one, two, three, four. A flag, a ladder, here's the ladder, and an anchor. There it is, I almost missed it. This one was really tricky. Let's see if we can count and add it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Adding up all of the things on this page make a really good number story. Three turtles sleeping, two frogs swimming, one lily pad, and five dragonflies darting on top of the pond. Three turtles, one, two, three, two frogs, four, five, one lily pad, six, five dragonflies, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. I just kept adding on until I got to the last number. Were you able to keep up? Do you have another way that you could count all of these items? I didn't write it in a sentence for you. How would you write it at home? Give it a try if you have time. The jack-o'-lantern has a cut-out nose and eyes and four teeth on the top row and four teeth on the bottom row. How many are all together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I would have never guessed that it had eleven all together. Three sets of triplets in a baby carriage and a pair of twins in the stroller. That is a lot of babies. Should we count them? Do you think we can count by threes? This one's really tricky. Three, six, nine, and two more, 10 and 11. Also equals 11. Counting by threes is really hard. A sow and 10 baby piglets. What's another word for sow? It's a pig. I know that 10 and 1 equals 11. This story gave us lots of different ideas about how we can make number stories at our house, either using objects in a collection like Miss Kathy did, pictures in a book, or even things that we can draw at home. This week at home, while you're practicing, why don't you find a paper and add some things to make your own number story. You could even make a number sentence at home. You could challenge grown-ups or even siblings to be able to solve your number story. Have fun making number stories at home this week. We also learned the number seven with Miss B and practice counting things with Miss Kathy. We hope you'll come back with us tomorrow for more at home with APS. Have a great day of learning.